Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, please do me a favor and subscribe. It would really help us out. Now, let's get to that interview. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got actress Joy Osmansky with me. So welcome, Joy. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Mike. I was so excited to, to talk with you. I've uh, been a fan of yours for a while. You've been doing this for a little while. I've, I've been around the block a few times. Yes. <laughs> Checked out the landscaping. Yeah. 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 You've done a few things. You've done a yeah. few things. So, so lots that I want to talk about. But before we get into all that, you know, tell me a little bit about what got you into acting. You know, why did you want to become an actress? Uh, I wasn't someone who who knew very clearly early on. That wasn't me. I was past college. I was working as a graphic designer. I think I'd been out of college for about three years. Yeah. And so I've had multiple lives. And um, for me, that's been a good pathway because maybe that's helped me stay in this job as long as I have, because I I know what the alternative is. And for me, it wasn't the right thing. So, but it was good. I, I'm I'm really grateful for all the things that I did leading up to finding acting. Um, I think it's made me a better actor, and and I was a late bloomer for sure. Yeah, I, th- I think that's that's pretty neat. Did so? Did when you were in school, did you take a theater class or anything like that, or did it all come? No, out? Um, no. Uh, wait, I took a mime class. <laughs> we can just. How did that just, work? Let's just keep going. I took them and and I was in some plays, but I I did them mostly as a dancer. I was a dancer oh, okay. um, my whole life, and so it was it, it wasn't something that I did seriously, and I never considered becoming a theater major. Yeah, um, yeah. It, it, like I say, I was a late bloomer. I was very thick headed about it. It didn't occur to me till much later that this is what I actually wanted to be doing. Yeah, but but don't you think that probably helped you to figure that out? I think so. Uh, I I certainly didn't have too many stars in my eyes when I very deliberately chose this path. Like yeah. I said, I've been out in the world. You know, I I've been earning a paycheck. I stepped away from that. I knew what it meant to have a, a steady job, but I also knew what it meant to be dissatisfied and creatively unfulfilled. And ultimately, that's what pushed me into doing what I do now. Was just boredom. Boredom. Do you, do you still draw? Like just yeah, for fun. I, I do not as much as I wish, but I I still love to do that and certainly do that with my kids a lot and um, yeah. yeah. So again, those skills still come in handy for sure. Well, yeah, yeah. It's it's always nice to have something outside of your main profession to go around with. Yeah, agreed. You need something. Yeah. Um. So what? Once you decided to to get into acting, you know, how did you go about that? Did did you go into commercials? Did you try to find roles as a dancer? You know, how did you? No, because I'm a perpetual nerd. I went back to school. Yeah, there you uh, go. Yeah, I I, I did a play, a local, like a community college type play. uh, No, like a community theater play. And then I did a, a play at an actual professional theater and was kind of mind blown. I was like, because I, I got paid to do it. And that kind of blew my mind. It was barely anything, but just the, the act of getting paid to do something that fun. And then I thought, I don't know what I'm doing. So I went to grad school for acting and uh, went to UCSD and did that amazing program and then made the move to Los Angeles on a, almost on a whim. I mean, I, I was planning to go to New York where uh, theater thrives. Yeah, yeah. And, um, but I went to LA where theater also thrives, but in a different way and um, was just very fortunate there. You know, it was a confluence of events. It was training. It was hard work. It was luck. It was all those things, but it it worked out okay for me there. Yeah. Yeah. LA has a surprising theater scene. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. You never hear much about it, but yeah, it's really good. They have, I mean, maybe next to New York, you know, but I, would, I mean, it doesn't have, you know, the 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 concentration of theaters. It doesn't have like broad. It doesn't have a Broadway. Right, right. It doesn't have that. But there's some wonderful regional theaters in Los Angeles and the surrounding area, and um, it's just kind of overshadowed by the more lucrative side yeah, of the. Business. Yeah, that's it. That's it. I've been to uh, several plays in, in LA, and they've all been just terrific. 
Oh yeah. It's, yeah. Really well, high the best quality. best acting you'll see is in like a tiny theater in a strip. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when, when you were, were dancing growing up, were you doing uh, competitions? No, I, no, I did do one competition, but I wasn't a competition dancer. That's a special, special kind of person who can yeah. handle that. I, I just danced um, for fun, primarily ballet, then some modern when I was in high school and I danced all the way through college, but I, it was never with the intention of being a professional. I, you have to be obsessed yeah. to do that. And I, I was never, I was never obsessed. I just loved it. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. Cause those are two different things. They could, they can go hand in hand, but they don't always. True. Yeah. <laughs> Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Competitive dance. That's a different animal. It is. It is. Yeah. You Difficult gotta have a lot of the parents. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> and I think I think my parents would have been supportive of that had I shown an interest, but that wasn't my thing. Yeah. Yeah. So so did did you at least do like recitals so they could come and see you dance? Oh so many. Nutcrackers, you know. Yeah, yeah. Oh god. Yeah. I mean, God bless the parents of dance kids. It's it's unrelenting. It's unrelenting. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. yeah, it never stops. You yeah. think sports like like dance is a sport? Oh, absolutely. It's just as busy. Absolutely, and sometimes yeah. if you're like my mom, you drive forty five minutes to an hour to get your kid to the right dance school, and no, it, <laughs> yeah, she was a saint. I don't know how she did it. She never complained. I always felt totally supported. I was very lucky. Yeah, no, that's that's good for good for mom. She did yes. good. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So, so what was your first TV movie type paying role? So the first thing I did was my, my first real job. Again, this, this was, looking back, I'm like, how the hell? Uh, it was a show on Fox called The Loop. It was my first TV role. It was a series regular role. And I, I think they'd been looking for this character for a while. So it was a perfect position to be in as a new actor. I knew nothing. I came in at the 11th hour. They were like, oh, finally, I think that's who it is. And there, there I was. I mean, it was just, <laughs> I, knew, I knew nothing. I didn't know you could be fired after a table read. I didn't know anything. And I think that was bliss. You know, yeah. I just went into the job just stunned and happy to be there and had such a great time. And it, it ran for two seasons. It was a little I ahead of its time. It was on for a little while. Yeah, it, it was a little ahead of its time, though. It was Will and Pam created a show that was, if it was now, it would be great. But it was a little edgier than what was typically happening at that time. And it was so much fun. It was a great show. Yeah, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty neat. Have you been fired from a table read? No, but, <laughs> but you know, it could happen. It happens all the time and i think that i would take comfort in that if it were to happen it's very very common and it's not anyone's fault and it doesn't mean anyone isn't talented it just means it just wasn't quite right you know table reads are are interesting because people mm. approach them differently you know mm. some people almost overact on a table mm. read you know trying stuff out some people are yeah. very reserved about it so they're you know, so it's, true. it's reading, you know, yes. and then you have some that really try to just be in character. I don't know. Yes. I, I think table reads are interesting. I completely agree. And depending on who's present for the table read changes the tone entirely. Like I've been yeah. in so many table reads where you're just surrounded by executives, like 50, 75 people are surrounding you. And that's stressful. that's kind of different energy. Everyone yeah. is very, very on for those table reads. Yeah, yeah that's stressful. Yeah, it's kind yeah. of fun. It's performance. You know, it's it's everyone's there to laugh and, and like it. And so, so I think, generally speaking, most of the table reads that I've been in, the energy is really good. Yeah, that's good. That's good. I wouldn't want to do the one where you have the one executive comes down and he's 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 just looking for a reason. Yeah, <laughs> there's plenty of those, too, I think. Yeah, that, that must not be fun. Oh. No, no, no. So you've been uh, in several shows that 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 I've really enjoyed over the years, but I wonder I want to bring up a few of them. Uh, sure. You did a couple of episodes on this show called Men of a Certain Age that oh, yeah. 
I love that show. I was so disappointed when that one didn't didn't last long. It lasted a couple of seasons, but it did. But again, I just think it's an example of one of those shows. It's so good. And I don't know, it was critically acclaimed. People loved it, but not enough people saw it. I don't know. The chemistry of why a show goes forever makes no sense to me. Do you know what I mean? Like there are some yeah. shows that have run for so long and I'm just baffled by it, frankly, and others that are just seem too beautiful to live. So I, I, I don't know. That was a, that was a too beautiful to live, I guess. That was such a great show, such a great experience. I loved every minute of that one. I mean, what a cast. I don't know. I'm not oh, sure what gosh. they were looking for. <laughs> oh, yeah. I mean, it was, it was fantastic. And just the nicest group of people. Yeah. 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 It was pretty good. I don't know. Yeah. But I really enjoyed you on that. And that, <laughs> and that was one of the early ones I remember seeing. Yeah, that was seeing. a while ago. Too. Yeah, I mean, it's been a little while. A, I was a baby. Yeah. Yeah, it's been a little while. Didn't you mm -hmm. do a stint on Grey's Anatomy? I did. Like that a, was you were much. like an intern. Yeah. I was one yeah. of Meredith's interns. Well, I thought. I, did, I don't know, eight episodes or so, but. Um, there was a bunch. Was, it was fun. It was fun. I had a hard time watching the show afterwards, though, because I sometimes when you see how the sausage is made, you can't quite. It's not the same anymore. Yeah. 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 My uh, my son that does the podcast with me, he says that all the time. He, he's in uh, mm -hmm. uh, film school and. The more he learns, the less he likes to watch stuff because he's very critical of it. <laughs> I know that happens. Knowledge is really disabling sometimes yeah. because you can't just enjoy. You're too busy dissecting. But you know what? That's how his brain should be right now. If he's learning, that's exactly he should be very that's critical right. and very analytical. And that'll ebb, you know. It will. That, it will. It will. You know, Gray's is getting ready to do their 400th episode. I mean, amazing, amazing. It's been on for like two decades. It has. It's insane. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. One of my dear friends is on it right now. Lynn Chen. She plays, um, I believe, a oh. new plastic surgeon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's wonderful. And yeah. Now the show is is phenomenal. I mean, my God, it's it's a world. It's a whole world. I'm not sure there's been, I guess there's been a few, you know, Law and Order and some shows that have been on just as long, mm. but you've got to really watch you know, some of that cast age and yes. just and grow into adulthood almost. I don't yes. know. It's very, it's very true. interesting. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. In real time. It's, it's fascinating. Did that show, because you have got to play a doctor a few times. Did, mm -hmm. did that show help you with the other shows? Did they say, well, we've seen her. No, I don't think <laughs> so. I don't think so. I mean, but you know what the thing is when you go in for an audition for a doctor, I honestly think the one of the main things they're looking for is just so you can if there's if there's medical ease that you can handle it without looking like you're thinking too hard. That's a good point. Yeah, that's a good point because it, yeah, it's a complicated dialogue sometimes. It can be, and if you can treat that language casually, I think that that is a real um, factor in your favor. So really, it, it's just. I think the other times I've played doctors, well, like the doctor I got to play on Shameless. Yeah. That one was, of course, one of the most fun because she she kind of loses it. But um, but yeah, that was another case where I just had so many scenes with Bill Macy and sitting across from him talking about his sperm. And you just have to be <laughs> able to, like, you know, deliver this information with a straight face as if you do it every day. Um, that's really the main thing about playing a doctor. Yeah. Yeah, I would be terrible at that. It's not easy. It is yeah. not easy. No, it's foreign language. I don't know anything about oncology. I have no idea what I'm talking well, about. Well, and I couldn't, I probably couldn't deliver the lines with a straight face and just the whole, the whole situation I think would get to me. I'm very oh, impressed with that. It wasn't, yes, it wasn't easy with, with him. He's incredible. And I, I kept having to sort of glaze over a little because he, yeah. I kept wanting to laugh a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I know. He's, uh, he's such an amazing actor amazing that yeah. is that so does that when when you're kind of opposite somebody that is obviously extremely good at their craft and you've done that in a bunch of different shows you mm -hmm. know does that make it easier on you or is it more difficult because you don't want to you know look bad in front of somebody that's really good 
There's definitely that aspect. Yeah, you don't want to make an ass out of yourself or or somehow bring the production down in any way. Right. You know, you want, but you have to assume that if you've made it that far that you're sitting across the desk from Bill Macy, that you've probably done something okay. Someone yeah. trusts you. So you can be confident with that knowledge. And ultimately, after you get over your initial like, oh my God, it's so easy because they're amazing and they give you so much. And all you need to do is just keep the ball in the air. And right. That's right. Fun. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You did a show called Samantha Who. Yes. I remember you on. And, and which is a, another one that I thought was really good. Oh, uh, but maybe, show. yeah, maybe came out a few years too early, you know, mm-hmm. but really good. It's really good yes. uh, show. And you were on there for several episodes. Yeah, I did some of those. And again, working with a pro, Christina, you know, just such a fun, generous actor to work with. She's and funny. oh my God, she's funny. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I had a great time on that show. The, sh- the writing was so good. And I thought the setup, you know, the whole amnesia thing was such a funny idea. This person having a chance to kind of reinvent themselves was so funny. And she did such a good job with it. Yeah, I loved working on that show. Pretty, uh, pretty, pretty great. So, yes. I, so I knew this this interview. I knew our interview was was meant to happen. So my uh, my wife was having trouble sleeping. This has been a week or two ago. Yeah. So she's up in the middle of the night, and she she works, but she'll have something playing in the background. So she was watching um, Lucifer. And you were on the episode. And I mean, of course, she didn't know that I was interviewing you, but I just happened to get up. You know, I woke up and I went to check on her and she's watching a scene with you in it. And I was like, hey, I'm going to talk to her. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's great. Oh, God, that another great one. And Tom and Rachel and I, I'd worked with Rachel Harris before on a pilot and she's just lovely. I adore her. And um yeah, that character was funny just because of what she got to say. I think one of my lines was literally bags and bags of poop. And because um, she had all that <laughs> horse poop in the back of her car. I think that's what she did. Yeah, it's always fun to play a really petty, vindictive character who does stuff like that. That's fun. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah. So we were talking some about um, voice acting. And you've done some on, is it Duncanville? Do I get that right? Yeah, Duncanville. Yeah. yeah, our third season just started up last Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. No pressure there. It's not like you're working with, you know, good actors or anything. You know, I'll tell you what, Mike, we, when we would do table reads, we did them on Zoom. And I honestly, we were Hilarious. talking about table reads earlier. Like, maybe the best table reads I've ever been a part of. Because, you know, uh, on Zoom, you'll see there's like 75 <laughs> participants. But, you know, it's just our little Brady Bunch squares on. And we're all dying laughing during the table read. Yeah. And it's a funny I, show. Oh, my God. And I know for a fact that everyone else is really enjoying it. Because when we did them in person, it was such a fun room to be in. And none of the tension, anxiety, or kind of like forced because, you know, Mike and Julie Scully and Amy Poehler, it's like, these people know what they're doing. Yeah. You know, there's no need to prove anything for them, really, in the same way that um, other shows that are just fledgling have. So even from the beginning, I remember walking into the first table read and being like, oh, this is, this is a different thing. And then I remember sitting next to Amy, I think Amy was on one side of me and maybe Ty Burrell, and I was just like, what is happening right now? Rashida Jones, you know, Wiz Khalifa pops up on the Zoom and his square is always like full of pot smoke. Oh my God, it's just, it's hilarious. <laughs> and he is so funny and kind. He's such a good guy. Um, yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, I know that show is uh, the cast. Like if you just read down through the cast, it's amazing who all oh, is voicing characters on that show. I know, they get some hilarious people. Like, I think it was our, Maybe it was our first episode that Alex Honnold, the guy who does who does yeah. the amazing rock climbing, he was a guest voice. <laughs> I was like, "What? That's hilarious." <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty. Yeah. No, I, that's one that um, my son was watching, and he's like, "Dad, oh, you good. need to start watching this." 
And I was like, oh, okay. And he's right. He was right. It's really good. It's, it's really funny. The writing is great. Yeah. I'm, I'm proud to be part of that. Yeah. It's not easy getting into uh, voice acting either. Like sometimes that can be more difficult than, than acting. It's kind of a select group. Oh yes, that's absolutely right. I'm so glad you know that because I feel like that isn't common knowledge and it's a much tighter pool and it can feel like a closed fist. Yeah. It's, it's very difficult to get into. I still marvel that I am within it. Yeah. It's pretty good because you have so many of really talented people that can do a zillion voices. Oh my gosh. And that's really, (laughs) that's so fun is when they let us, because I voice Jing, but I also do a ton, at least in every episode, I do at least two or three other voices. Yeah. And it's so fun to just do a couple of things here and there. And they just let you go. You know, they're so supportive uh, and they don't give a whole lot of direction. There's just a lot of trust. In, in the show and that's very empowering yeah that's pretty great that's pretty yeah, great yeah. and yeah you're in now so now when you go for other voice gigs let's pray they'll be like oh great right. she knows what she's doing she's in it it helps it definitely <laughs> helps yeah you're you're definitely <laughs> vetted by something that you're currently doing for sure yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so star girl mm. which you know i'm a big you know, I, back in the 90s, I was a comic book owner. That's how I put myself through college. Yeah. I owned a couple of comic book stores. And I was always a big Justice uh, Society fan. So when, oh, nice. you know, when the CW decided they were going to to do Stargirl, I was very excited. And it's lived up to it. It's, it's turned out to be a really good show. Great. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's been a singular experience working on it. Yeah. Really. Yeah. 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 So you play uh, Tigress. Who's kind of a badass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, which I have a I have a poster of Tigress up in our office. And my son, who's six, had a little neighbor friend over, and the neighbor was kind of eyeing because I look scary in the poster. And, yeah. and my I heard my son go, That's my mama. She plays, <laughs> she plays Tigress. And the kid was like, uh-huh. And then my son goes, She's evil. <laughs> and I was like, no, 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 no. I was like, no, no, it's just me. It's just me. Because the kid was like, oh, God. Oh, yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Did, no, you have oh, to, no. did you have to train for that? Did you have to do some yeah. special training for that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but that's really honestly where the dance training kicked in. And oh, hard yeah. Oh, my gosh. I am so grateful. Were it not for that, I wouldn't have been able to do nearly as much as I was able to do. And um, I did as much as I possibly could because it's so much fun. And my respect for stunt performers is I, I, immeasurable. They're in talk about athletes. They're just yeah, true. incredible. Um, very humbling to be around stunt performers. <laughs> you know, you think oh, I'm an actor, I'm all brave, I'm going on camera, I'm bearing my soul, I'm whatever. No, they're literally risking their lives. Yeah. So what I'm doing is a form of bravery, but what they're doing, I mean. I just my jaw drops. Yeah. I could see where dac- or um dancing would help because yes. Tigress very acrobatic, you know, her abilities tend to to lend to that. So you would think that dancing ability would fit right in with the way she moves. It helps. It helps you learn the choreography of the moves. It helps you just process where you are in space. Yeah. Um yeah, there's a really incredible sequence that's going to be in our upcoming season and I was so grateful for my dance training because it was <laughs> a long sequence and yeah it just helps to understand where you are in the world it sounds like a fight sequence it's it's pretty amazing yeah 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 that's exciting that's exciting yeah. when you got the role did they send over a bunch of the uh, comic books or did you have to do your own research no, you know, Mike, when I got the role, I didn't even understand what it was because <laughs> when I auditioned for it, they gave you, as they often do with these kinds of projects, they give you sides. They're just written for the audition. They're not real. There's no real character names. It's all coded. So I didn't have, I was doing a play at the time in LA at the taper. And I I was just in the thick of that. And I was like, I can't, I don't have time to do this audition. Right, I, I just don't have time. And then I looked at the material and I was like, oh, that's really funny. It's funny. Um, 
And for the longest time, honestly, I thought it was Supergirl. I didn't understand what it was really. And I did the audition and got the role. And Mike, then they told me, oh, this is a dual character. This is, and I looked, yeah. at, this is me on Google. I was like, Paula Brooks. Oh my God. And then I was like, Tigress. I was like, oh God. I mean, I was just, <laughs> and I think that might've been where I stopped. I was like, I can't look. It's too much. It's scary. I, I better not look. Yeah, there's a lot of backstory there. <laughs> there's a lot of backstory, a lot of iterations, a lot of legacy. And I was like, this is going to freak me out. It's going to freak me out. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. We had uh, Stella came on. I know, and I adore her. I yeah. adore Stella. Yeah, she was uh, wonderful and, and does such a good job on the uh, oh. on the show. She's fantastic, yeah. I think your your family dynamic with the three of you is, I, that to me, that's fun to watch because there's a oh, lot good. going on there. You know, it seems yeah. like, you know, even when you, it, you give each other a lot of looks, yes. I'll say it that way. <laughs> As parents do. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, Neil and I, I feel so fortunate to work with Neil. He also has two kids. You know, he's a working actor with with children and a family. And there's just a common language that yeah. clicks in that case. And um, I'm not saying you have to be a parent to play a parent by any means. But for us, it made building the vocabulary of our family of our family really simple. Yeah. And um, working with Stella was so easy. And we both we all just clicked very quickly. It was really nice. Yeah, she's pretty talented for being so young. She's and amazing. Yeah, she really does a, a, a good job. I mean, it's yeah. it's impressive. Yeah, no, she's got a sophisticated understanding of the psychology and the emotion of her character, yeah. I think. And you can you yeah. can tell it's very, very grounded. And uh and yeah, she has to put up with me and Neil being just <laughs> total goofballs we're just such we're such goofballs on set and Stella is so professional and Neil and I are like <laughs> yeah that's hilarious yeah yeah which is exactly what it's like because mm -hmm. as you get older you get to that point where you're comfortable enough to goof around a little bit but when you're younger and trying to establish yourself you you, you try to be very professional yes yes ab absolutely and then and then you do it for long enough and you <laughs> <laughs> it's true and you get a little goofy it's so yeah. true yeah that's true that's true so have you finished filming season three yes we wrapped season three um and it's a great great season i'm yeah. really excited for people to see this one i feel like every year jeff has taken it to just the right place do you know what i mean like i felt like the first season was such a wonderful sort of retro throwback there were all these wonderful, like, back to the future feels to it. Yeah. And then season yeah. two got dark. I mean, Eclipso was really scary. I found yeah, that he's dark. Yeah. Like, really, like, my kids weren't allowed to watch any of that. He was scary in the comic books. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, I feel like that was the right place to go for a second season, you know, because you want to yeah. see it get, you want to see that it can go there. It has the potential to go to a dark place like that. And then the third season... I think it gets, it, it has the ability to get very complex. And I think people are going to see that happen, which is cool. Oh, I see. Yeah, that's exciting. It's not like Jeff doesn't know what he's doing. He kinda, I know. He kind of knows the comic book side of it. Yeah, decent, decent track record. <laughs> <laughs> nicest, well, nicest human. Oh, yeah. He seems terrific. Like when he you is. watch him on interviews and stuff, he, he just seems really like just a good guy. He is. And, you know, it really trickles down from a showrunner. Yeah. Um, and one of his biggest priorities, I know for a fact, because I asked him about it in season one, I was like, why is everyone so nice? Because literally it was disarming and not typical. And he was like, oh, that was the first thing we look for. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to like it here. I'm going to like it here. Yeah. They did a good job, I thought, casting the, um, the Justice Society, you know, the oh. original one. For the flashbacks and stuff, I was like, they did, they did a pretty good job with that. They did a great job. Yeah, all yes. those callbacks are so fun. I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty. It's 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 been pretty uh, pretty good. I thought they did a, a pretty good balance, you know, with uh, paying um, homage to the the history mm. and the comic book side of it, and still having the 
teen angst, you know, kind of uh, feel that the CW is kind of known for. Yes. Yeah. You, I think you articulated that perfectly. <laughs> I think, yeah, because there are certain expectations when you're on a certain network, but when you're doing something with this much legacy, there's the fans have certain expectations too. So you're having yeah. to meet the needs of both really ingrained uh, users and then the people who are new to the content. So there's a lot to juggle. I'm glad that is not my job. I would have. Yeah. No and they idea. just keep adding shows. Oh my gosh. I know. I, I, would, I would have loved having all that when I was young. Oh, can you imagine? I had like two channels. I mean, yeah, yeah. me too. Yeah. yeah, we had none of that. You know, mm. I was so into uh, the comic books and fantasy and sci-fi and all that stuff. And there really wasn't much. There was Star yeah. Trek. Yeah, you had Star Trek and you had uh, Star Wars, you know, back Star in the Wars. 70s. And, like, and a few I others. Love, do you remember that show, The Greatest American Hero? Of course. Yes, I've I tried, tried to get him to come on the show. <laughs> oh, I love that show. Oh, my God. That's yeah, a, that wasn't a, a, lot. a, cult that wasn't a lot. classic. Yeah. 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 I, I absolutely love that show. And, yeah. and, and he's still out there. Yeah. One day I'll get him to come on. Oh, that and would I'll be amazing. Really bad, you know, jokes, I'm sure, when he's on because that, that show was just the best. It really was. It really was. I mean, they tried to redo it. I think they tried to redo it with, a, they? with oh. like a, a female version. And it didn't work very well at the time. But I think if they tried now, maybe. But yes. you have to, you got to yes. find somebody that is likable, but really goofy. You know, yes. like he was so believable uh, with somebody that just had no clue what he was doing. Yeah, it's true. Yeah, you know, and that's true. hard, I think. It is. It, you're right. It is a hard thing to do. And the person has to be so comedically gifted hmm because you don't want somebody to just seem goofy no so where they're 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 being goofy you know yeah, you no, want no, you're right it's right. believable that it just keeps accidentally running into all these situations that come up you're right you're right it's a tricky yeah. it's a tricky tightrope to walk and he did it really well yeah hmm. it's pretty good that's pretty good yes. now i'm thinking about who would be a good remake for that hmm. yeah i don't know to think about that i don't know because it yeah because the rest of the cast was maybe a little more established at the time yeah you know that makes sense to surround him with yeah, yeah. he had some veteran actors around him mm -hmm. mm -hmm. we're gonna mm -hmm. we should i bet that property is still out there somewhere we should look into that I'm sure it is. I'm sure it's already in the works. You know, get, I'm sure. yeah, probably. There's, you know, I, there's, there is. There's tons of new ideas, but the, we we tend to dip back into the pool quite a bit. I mean, hey, one of my one of my friends, Raymond Lee, is the new Quantum Leap, and I am really, so, yeah, and he's going to. It just got picked up to series. Oh my and gosh, he is going to kill it, and. For me, an Can't Asian wait American for that. actor to see an Asian American actor in that lead role for that franchise, which is so well known. Oh my gosh, that's you amazing! Know. Yeah, he's going to be. Oh, it's uh, it's so exciting! Yeah, I'm I'm so. really looking forward to um to the to the reboot. Yeah, right, and they have to get Scott Bakula as a cameo, right? I come on, how could they not? Right? How could they not? Yeah, they I'm sure to. that'll happen. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm yeah, sure. oh, that's that's exciting. See, you, I know. You, you, yeah, you told me something there because I knew it was kind of being rumored, but I didn't yeah. realize they were to the casting phase. They are. He is. He is. Uh, they shot the pilot. It got picked mm -hmm. up. He looks fantastic in it. Uh, I'm just really excited for him. Yeah. Be great. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's pretty exciting. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's mm -hmm. pretty good. Mm -hmm. So you have to tell me this one because I don't know if if I'm remembering this right, but it was a comic book show. Did you do an episode of I Zombie? I did. Okay. I, I, in my head, I was like, I'm pretty sure she did, but yeah, that's impressive. Yeah. yeah, yes. yeah. God. Um, I know. I've got like limited superpowers, and what I have is just useless, except yeah. with podcasting. I was like, I'm no. going to find some way to find a, a use for that's this. A, okay. That's a great skill. Um, you know, you're right. And I remember that episode was doubly cool for me because not only was it fun to work on the show but um Enrico Colantani was the director and he's from oh, Galaxy yeah. Quest and that's one of my yeah. favorite favorite movies and oh, I that's a great movie oh god it's good 
And I managed to wait until I was wrapped to like fan all over him. And I was like, okay, finally, now I can tell you my truth because I didn't want it to be a thing. And he's such a great director because he's such a good actor. Yeah. And it made the episode really fun. And I remember I was pregnant at the time and they oh had to hide, but I was, but I was the killer, Mike. I think that was the I'm, first time I know. got to be the killer. Yeah, that's kind of fun, right? Oh, so fun. So fun. I mean, you're you're a bad guy kind of on Stargirl, but Yeah, I've, I kill I kill a few dozen people. A few people. people. Yeah, you have a few people. <laughs> Neil and I are always joking because we get these very kind messages from fans who are like, "I wish you were my parents." And we're like, "You what?" Yeah, that's not what no. you want. <laughs> no, no, no. But you know, but I get what people are saying. They're saying they want they want someone who believes in them that much or who would go to bat for them literally with a bat. Um, but yeah, that always tickles me because I'm I enjoyed like, the I episode you. where you broke out of prison or you got out of prison, you went to the track. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, I love we will stop at nothing for, for Artemis. We'll stop at nothing. Like, yeah, yeah, we'll go back. Just let us finish watching, you know, her do her thing. Yeah. I mean, it was like when when Hina, who played Principal Bowen, when she in, in, did that one criticism of our parenting, I just kill her. It's like we have no tolerance. <laughs> we have no tolerance for being criticized as parents. No, no, no. It's a tough crowd. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You do not want to be a principal at that school. No, I think that's um, that's like a revolving door kind of job. You're just yeah. in and then you're dead. Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Mm. Or, or is, would you, know, you even want to live in that town? It's like all of this whole super villain team just decided to populate the right town. Down. Yeah. Yeah. No, it, it's definitely the kind of situation where it might seem a little too nice. And it's because it is it, yeah. it's uh, there's dark underbelly. That's yeah. right. That's right. All right. So, so a couple more, cause I know we got to uh, wrap up. We loved you on Santa Clarita diet. Oh yeah. Yeah. That was a fun that, show. That was an amazing, uh, to me getting to work with Drew and Timothy, I was, I've always been a huge fan of Drew Barrymore and um, I was a huge Deadwood fan. So me too. Yeah. Oh, that show. Oh, so to work with him and to, to get to work with him in such a fun, funny way, yeah. you know, to see him as Seth on Deadwood, where he's just like gritted teeth the whole time and he's just got that brown. And then on this show, he was so goofy. And I think that was really, and he's so good at that, actually. Yeah, yeah, he really is. You know, he, he plays it really well. And that is not something that a lot of dramatic actors do. And he does it well. No, because he's the tough guy, you know, the silent yeah. tough guy. Yeah. You know, he did that on Justified, too. And, he, yes, and he's right. so good at that. So and when you see him that. doing comedy, you're like, what? But he's yeah. so good at it. So good. Um, very kind, very generous. Both he and Drew created an environment on that show that was was really wonderful. And that was also uh, Victor Fresco uh, created that show and God, he's good at that. He did better off Ted as well. And just, oh, I love better off Ted. That was another yeah. one that didn't get a good enough chance. I don't it think. really didn't. And I remember having such a good time on that set too. I just think there's certain, there's certain showrunners that create a culture in yeah. their work. Do you know what I mean? And, yeah. and that makes people like me be like, I, I want to work with you. I don't care what it is. I just want to be part of it because I yeah. know it's going to be good. Yeah. 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 When they come calling, you're like, yes. Yeah. I will uh -huh. do. Yep. I will do I'll that. Do. <laughs> Tree number five. I'll do that. Seriously. Like I would not, I like, like I'll say this publicly. If like the Daniels need tree number five, I will, I'll be tree number five for the Daniels. Yeah. I think you, everyone would be. Tree well, and you know, tree number five will probably end up being, you know, pretty, pretty popular. great character. Yeah. You know, it will. it's so true. It's so true. <laughs> oh, man. It's, amazing. it's not just a tree. <laughs> You're, right. You're right. With them, it wouldn't just be a tree. Yeah, they're, they're phenomenal. So last one I wanted to bring up, um, when I was just a, I was just a little, little boy. I used to love to watch 
the uh, the original SWAT that was on like in the early 70s. Now, I was yes. watching it probably mid 70s. So I was watching the reruns, but I had a uh, a SWAT van and the little 12 inch figures, you know, dressed. I love that show. So when they came out with the new one and it was a movie and then the, the came out, show, I was all in. Right. I was in. But you got to play an agent on there. Yeah, that was that was crazy because um, I'd never done anything like that before. I'd never played any kind of law enforcement, FBI. Yes. I'd never been in that world. And that was another one similar to the medical stuff where you're saying a lot of very specific vernacular for that world. And um, it, it has to come fast and easy. Yeah. <laughs> and that was, it's a really specific challenge as an actor to do that kind of stuff because it's not, uh, it's not emotional. And you're responsible for getting out oftentimes a massive amount of information. Yeah. So, so it was actually, but you know, SWAT, SWAT was great to work on because that is one of those shows that is a finely tuned machine. Like they've been running for enough seasons now. They run tight. They run really well. Um, at the time that I was working on it, we were in some of the COVID stuff. So there were protocols that were being followed and they kind of set the gold standard for Hollywood. They were one of the first shows back. Right, Their right. Their standards were really high. And so high that I remember being like, whoa, this, is this a little much? And then I worked on another show that wasn't quite up to that. And I was like, oh, no, no, that was good. That was really good. That was really good. Um, yeah, they they were a tightly run machine and I had a great time on that. And again, all the all the stars on that show are just, you know, people think that I think that actors or celebrities or which, you know, and celebrities are this much of who's in Hollywood. But people think those folks are just they define everyone. And my experience has been that career actors, working actors are some of the kindest nicest most humble funniest people you'll meet because you can't survive in this business with your sanity intact without being having a really big heart do you know you just can't for right, right and you have to treat people correct you have to because no one's i mean you hear every once in a while there are some cases where you can hear people put up with some nonsense but that's rare yeah and it doesn't last and and I think most people want people to feel good about them. <laughs> I don't think yeah. most people want to leave a stink in the room. You know, they want people to feel better yeah. for them having I been agree. there, not worse. That show had to be fun going on because, you know, going in at some point, you're going to look really cool. Like yeah. they're going to dress you up and you're going to look kind of cool. What's fun is I remember doing a scene with all the SWAT equipment around me, like that <laughs> massive armored vehicle where I think I came up to like the headlight. You know what I mean? That thing, is, <laughs> that thing is enormous. And I was like, my God. And the big SWAT bus with all the Intel equipment inside it. And it's very intimidating. Yeah. It's very intimidating. And, you know, they, they put all these things on you, like the badge and the, the firearm and the pieces and you're just it's a lot of weight it's a lot of stuff and you have to look like you wear it every day and and then you think there are people who do this every day for real i know and that that that's true there's actually people out there doing that as a job <laughs> yeah that's wow. the reality i mean that that blows my mind because um i can pretend to do that but to do that for real ooh, yeah it's pretty scary. impressive yeah, yeah it's pretty very impressive, impressive. Very well, impressive. Joy, thank you so much. This is, uh, I've been looking forward to this one and this was just terrific. I just oh, love so having you on the show. Thank <laughs> you. Thanks so much for having me. Of course, of course. So, so a couple of things before you go, um, anything else you're working on that we can keep an eye out for? Um, other than the current seasons that are about to air, let's see. So Duncanville just started airing last Sunday and Star yes. is going to start airing over the summer. So just keep an eye out for when that happens. I, I like that they air it. over the summer because, yeah. you know, that's a good time. We need more shows during the summer. Yes. And everyone's like hungry for content. Yeah. 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 That's a good time yeah. to do it. Okay. Yeah. So where can we find you on social media? I'm, I'm really only on Instagram and Twitter, both at Joy Osmansky. Very straightforward. Oh, yeah. It's very easy. It's yeah. very easy. Yeah. yeah, so I always say Instagram is for all the fun stuff and Twitter's for when you're feeling a little spicy. <laughs> <laughs> Twitter's 
just when you like maybe want to take some deep breaths and yeah. yes, Instagram is for looking at cute, fun things. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. It's fun. You never, you never see people arguing or fighting on Instagram. I mean, not not really. I do follow some accounts that get a little heated, but only yeah. because people have people have opinions. What are you gonna do? But yeah, you're right. Twitter can get downright. There have been plenty of times where I'm like, why am I on Twitter? I I gotta. We I gotta, all go through that. Ah, uh, don't you remember what like when when Facebook first came out and mm-hmm. in MySpace too, and mm-hmm. it was like, oh, this is the best way I can share photos with people, you know, with family. You know, yeah. I can reconnect with people I haven't seen in years. This is the best. And then and then it just went downhill. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then everyone just became this random person in a town square with a megaphone. And you're just like, like please just go back to showing me what you're eating. <laughs> yeah. All the good old days of photos of good food. Good old days. <laughs> it's so true, Mike. Oh, my God. It's so true. And that wasn't that long ago. I mean, it all became what it is today very quickly. Yeah, too quickly. Too, oh, I agree. I agree. Well, thank you, Joy. Let's uh, let's do it again sometime. I would love that, Mike. Yeah, great. Okay, hold on one second. Well, how nice is Joy Osmansky? She was just the best. I had the uh, the best time talking with her, and we uh, we had scheduled this uh, a week or so ago. And like a lot of us, she she got a cold, you know, and uh, and and uh, wasn't. Filling, uh, filling up to, uh, to, to talking, which I completely get because you, you get, uh, you, you get uh, stopped up and it makes it so difficult to, to have a conversation. But I was so happy that she hung in there with me. And, and when she was feeling better, she came back on and she was just lovely. Really enjoyed that. Um, and we were bouncing around. She has a really impressive resume and we didn't even touch on all of it. So I'm going to run through a few things that I didn't get to bring up. But maybe when she comes back, we'll talk about. So she had a a role on Monsterland that I thought was really, really good. She was in this show called um, The Fosters, where she played a doctor. Uh, Really good. She was on Younger for an episode. And then there was another one I wanted to mention. Um, Oh, Devious Maids. She she had a a nice... uh, uh, recurring role on there, but she's been on Magnum PI, The Good Doctor, Will and Grace, Castle. You know, I love uh, Castle. She's uh, really, uh, really had a, a good career. Oh, and the following, I did want to ask her about that because that show was it was such a creepy, fun show. Um, and I love Kevin Bacon, so I, so I wanted to ask her about that. So we'll definitely have to bring that one up when uh, when she comes back. Hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I had just a a blast. You know, if you want to help us out, we're really trying to grow our subscriptions on our YouTube channel, MeisterCon Pod. So if you could subscribe or if you consider subscribing, we'd really appreciate that. That would help us out. You can find Closing In now. We're getting close to 400 episodes. Uh, You can get all of those audio and video on our website, MeisterCon.com. If we're doing anything in studio, if we're going to a convention, which was another question I should have asked uh, Joy, if if she, I'm sure that if she hasn't started making the convention round, she will be soon. So maybe we'll get to see her at a, a convention. But if we're if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location anywhere, all of that will be on the website MeisterCon.com. So thank you guys so so much. Until next time, bye everybody. <laughs>